Hey, what's up, everyone? It's Tuesday. Happy video game day. Tomorrow is going to be happy comic book day. But just wanted to do another show for you video game market heads. Wanted to see specifically Star Wars and see if it's an investable uh, for the long term. There's a couple that I think are potential maybe pick up now and keep on just holding it for a very long time. Or there's a couple that just haven't really... The market just doesn't like them for right now. And a new one. Uh, I just wanted to highlight some new stuff and actually look at some games that we're actually going to be playing in the next couple of weeks or so. Uh, but again, I want to thank everyone for their support. We are at 712 subscribers. Our last video game market report didn't do so well. But the one previous to that is actually my most viewed uh, video. So it sounds like people are still liking these reports. If you guys can like, subscribe, make some comments. I want to know what you guys are into. I want to know what you guys are thinking about. Um, I think the last report that I did a couple weeks ago, it was very specific on grading. I got some comments on wanting to know, you know, different grading companies, what I thought of those. And I'm actually going to go pretty heavy in VGA just because of those comments. So, and the more subscribers we get, the more views that we get hourly wise, um, the more giveaways that I'll do. Um, I haven't been able to get to a giveaway that or to get to a show that's done enough for a giveaway. But I think if I get one for 500 views, I will do a sealed video game uh, of my choice just to give out to the community. It's not going to be a sucker one. It'll be a pretty nice one. So uh, just a big thank you to everyone that's been supporting the channel and network. And without further ado, I'll shut up and get into the video. Uh, very fun one. As always, I try and do kind of a, I usually do like a big, um, you know, kind of variation, not very specific on what video games we're looking at. But I think this one I want, I started pretty heavy on Star Wars just because it, I had some nostalgia hits back uh, a couple of days ago. Um, specifically, this one we're going to start off pretty, pretty big here. Star Wars Shadows of the Empire. I remember playing, I know I played this game, but I don't remember actually playing it, which means a lot. I always remember. I always remember going to Toys R Us and seeing this video game and the art was just phenomenal. It's whenever I see this game, it, it, it automatically takes me back to when I was a kid uh, just from looking at it. However, I, I'm not a proponent of this game as far as like it was the best game ever because I just don't remember playing it, but I know I did. So whatever that's worth, you know, whatever. But I remember this game along with the pod racing game was kind of the big two Star Wars games that uh, kicked off Nintendo 64. It doesn't go for a ton, in my opinion, but I think over time, people are going to remember this game like myself and be like, hey, I want this as part of my collection. And for 535 bucks for a sealed 8.0, I feel like that's really good. Um, I I know I did a, a, I know I did a, a little market snippet of this game, and I feel like everyone that saw, or maybe not everyone, but I, I got a, a few new tricks, you know, or a few new likes on it. So I feel like a lot of people know this game. And so I just think over time, like for 535 bucks for an original N64 sealed video game that arguably is like one of, was one of the mainstays for Nintendo 64, at least for my generation, um, I think that's a really good deal. And it just could grow over time. But we'll see. 64 is one of the easier CIB um you know, systems to invest in as far as uh, video games are. And if you looked at my previous shows, uh, I have a flip that is almost guaranteed if you can get a good copy of it. And even if not, you can still make some pretty good money on that. So um, on to the next. PS4 Squadrons. I just thought, you know, I saw this, I saw this particular game, like I think at Target or something. And I just saw it and I was like, man, the art's just beautiful on this. It's a PlayStation VR game. So there might be this weird, I want to say nostalgia, but like collectability because the PlayStation VR games don't do very well as of today. But you can buy this game for 10 bucks, a sealed copy for a VR game. Um, it's a lot like obviously the TIE Fighter game that I grew up playing on my PC. Shout out to my homie, Andrew Fom, who uh, introduced me to that game. And I remember I remember playing it at his house in Bellevue and I just couldn't get enough of it. And it made me uh, want to buy a PC version for myself. And I, I mean, I always, I'll always cherish that game for sure. Um, this game was released during the pandemic, so it's not very old, but for 10 bucks for a sealed copy, I mean, you know, find one that's not loose. Cause if it's a loose game, if you're grading, it's going to have some effect on the grade of your game. And now it's, it's the dumbest thing, right? Like if you have a loose game, like how are you supposed to like, how are you supposed to, you know, plan for that? I, I think it's, it's a tough one. Right. But regardless, you know, go out, make sure it's still sealed. The sealed PS4 games in general, they just have really loose wrapping. So make sure you find one that has a really nice Y, y seal. 
Um, it's not impossible to get a 9.9 .9 out of these guys, but it really is hard to get a high grade out of this. So 10 bucks for sealed copy though. I'd say buy five of them, grade three and see what happens. Um, this game might just play over time. I think the one thing that has going against it, it's, it's a simulator, like um, a simulator game in regards to like, you know, flying uh, a ship versus like a Jedi game. But the art's cool. It's it's PlayStation 4 uh, VR. So might not be a lot of people looking for this game. Who knows? For 10 bucks, I'm, I'm willing to risk it. And this is an upcoming game, um, Star Wars Outlaws. My buddy Pickles, you guys know him from the Sunday live show. He actually bought this game a little inebriated. And I think he's excited for it. It's a it's the first open world concept for Star Wars. A story that follows Kay Vess. She is the girl on the right there who looks a lot like Star Wars Darth Vader number three. What's her name? Shoot. I totally just forgot her name. Sorry. We'll cut that out later. Uh, this game will come out later this month. And there's a lot of, I think there's a lot of hype around it. I could see this game being what Spider-Man 2 was to the PlayStation 5. This game might be this to the Xbox series or just in general Star Wars. Um, I don't know. There's a collector's edition, so let's take a look at Star Wars Outlaws. And, you know, this is a newer game. I think, you know, the onset of how the pandemic has affected how people consume content and the fact that there won't be that many probably of these because of just people wanting to download the game versus having to go out and buy it. I think it's... It's not a bad idea to get to get this bad boy, um, to get this to get this um, video game in physical media. So there's a limited edition here. I'll share this real quick. Pure now. So it's the gold edition includes game and a season pass. So I would definitely. I don't know. I like I like to think of. There's a special edition too. Okay, how much is the special edition? So special edition is not the, not not the cool one. Um, this gold edition, I guess, it just has some DLCs or season pass, whatever. I think you can play this online as well. So, pretty cool. I, I mean, I'm pretty excited for it. I don't know if I'll buy this right away, but I definitely would think about getting the gold edition for sure on PS5. Um, but I have the Xbox Series X one here as an ode to my homie Jason. So, another Star Wars game, Star Wars Force Unleashed. Uh, shout out to Nemesis Prime, who, if you're watching this show. Man, if you guys aren't watching Nemesis Prime, he has he does a podcast and he and he and you can go to the you can go to the Comic Cons podcast channel. But he also has been doing some content showing off his video games. And it's not getting a lot of views, and he, at least initially, but check it out. He's got some really cool games. He has a 9-9 Star Wars game. If you guys are checking out his last video, I'll put it in the description below. But really cool dude. Um, he's been very helpful in collecting video games as well. But uh, he was kind of an inspiration for this particular game, Star Wars Force Unleashed. I don't know what's going to push this game higher, but why is it not live action? I don't know. Um, it's probably has to do with just, you know, Disney, what have you. But 100 bucks for this PS3 goodness, I think that's pretty fair. It'll probably stay there for a long time unless they reintroduce this game, but I don't see them doing that anytime soon. Just with Knights of the Old Republic, that's probably more of a... Of a more that has a higher ceiling than this game does but i haven't seen this go lower than 100 bucks sealed and i haven't seen it gone higher than 100 bucks sealed i haven't found that many graded um prices for this game either but star wars force unleashed it has a strategy guide that i cannot find a good copy of but uh if you're a comic book fan as well you might as well get the and you're collecting this game just for collector's sake you might as well get the game the comic book the strategy guide and the figure it's pretty cool but um, yeah, on to the next. Kind of going old school. I never had a Genesis growing up, but I remember going around town and like one friend had a Genesis, one had, had one friend had a Nintendo, and one friend over time, well, they didn't yet because they didn't come out yet. Uh, super, they had a Super Nintendo, someone had a Nintendo, all the controllers everywhere. But it, you had that one kid that had every goddamn system, and Genesis was always the system that I always would go over to a friend's house and play. I always thought it was underrated for everything. And then Sega Saturn came out and I got a Sega Saturn. But anyway, Gargoyles, I forgot this game existed. I never played it uh, back in the day, but I wanted to throw some old school Genesis, Sega, Sega Genesis love out there. 
Um, I remember playing it at Bon Marche, but I never actually remember playing it like at home, which I probably didn't. Uh, 240 to 250 CIB, beautiful. I think that's pretty amazing. Um, hold on one second. Let's see here. Oh, I don't know. We'll see. Um, I remember playing this at the, or sorry, 240 to 250 CIB. And I think, you know, the tough thing with Genesis is it has kind of like that clamshell. Um, case right so you really have to be careful to make sure there's no chips on it um make sure that the grit that the that the you know the pamphlet or the strat not strategy guide but the instruction manual to the game is in pretty good condition as well but 240 to 250 cib not a lot of sellers out there not a lot of buyers i think this is like you have to just get a seller on a good day but if you're a gargoyle fan i mean like why not uh this is a great addition to your collection and in genesis i think it pops a little better too so Anyway, before I get into the next slide, I just want to thank again. Uh, we're about 11 minutes into the show. Uh, if you guys could just do me a favor, click that like button. It takes about two seconds to do it. Subscribe to all your friends. We're still trying to grow the channel. 800 is the next big, big, big goal to get to. It's taken, seems like forever, but not forever. I've had a great time doing these shows, and I just started doing these market reports for video games, for comic books. I do the list every every Sunday live. And I'm doing one piece as well, trying to dive into that market, um, everything collectible. I'll do an unboxing show tomorrow. But yeah, if you guys could just watch my past shows too. Um, there's a lot of good stuff there. And to do these weekly, it you know I try and do variations of like what's actually um, you know selling and whatnot. I've used price charting in the past. I'm not really going into price charting a ton this show, but um, it's a great resource. And I think video games is kind of the newer... It really hasn't caught fire like comic books did or sports cards or cards in general. But I really think there's an opportunity to make some money in video games. So I hope you guys get a lot of uh, information out of these reports here and, and kind of know what to look out for. Uh, Final Fantasy 3. I never played this game in particular because I was a Final Fantasy 7 fan. Um, I would say no to this game, but what do I know? And I would say no because of this. This is a really hard game to get in a high grade. Because of if you're a comic book fan, look, it's black, black borders. Um, it's just you're gonna get wear and tear. It's gonna be easier to see. It's gonna be hard to get a high grade. But holy cow, a nine point four complete in box this past week sold for three thousand bucks. There's a lot of fandom with this game. Some argue this is the best Final Fantasy game ever. I think Final Fantasy VII is, in my opinion, but I think it's still playable. I think the fact though that this game was on Super Nintendo it adds a little bit more nostalgia to the to it as well um kind of the reason why final fantasy is named final fantasy and all the other corresponding ones squaresoft was on the brink of bankruptcy and so kind of as like a joke or kind of like as like i guess a last resort they named final fantasy one because they thought that was being the final fantasy game they were going to make lo and behold they made and are still making final fantasy games to this day so um kind of cool a little trivia if you guys didn't know that but it kind of stuck with the franchise and what have you and has brought joy to many hours of nerd nerddom ever since 1989 or whatever it is. But anyway, holy cow, 9.4 CIB went for 3K. I said that already, so I'm just going to say it again. But I think that's just amazing for CIB Super Nintendo game even so. But I don't think there was a lot of kids playing this game either. So you probably had that in the background also. But it's a beloved game. I know this is like one of those staple Super Nintendo games that people always look for in garage sales and whatnot. So happy hunting. Try and get a good, good, uh, good box out of that once to get a high grade. And man, if you can get 3K for that game, all the best to you. Uh, Metroid Seamus returns 800 bucks in VGA 90. So I think that's a pretty, that's great. Um, I think that's a steal for VGA. Uh, VGA, I think I never graded with VGA, but I feel like their grading skill, it, it's not, I wouldn't say it's confusing, but I feel like you're going to get a better bang for your buck in an 80 to 85 versus an 8.5 or 8.0 in CGC. I think, I don't know, this is really just speculation, but I think that grading scale in like the one through 100s, it really helps the value of a game. So if you enjoy the way that VGA scores, I would say, and you're trying to decide between CGC, I don't, I don't like WADA, I just, I just don't. Um, so I'm not going to talk about them because I'm biased, but 
I think if you prefer the nine one to one hundred scale uh, grading, then you should definitely go VGA. The only thing is, it's a little bit more expensive. It's it's going to take a little bit longer. CGC is definitely like, hey, we are pumping these games out as soon as as quick as quickly as possible. Um, I feel like they grade pretty tough though, but pretty like pretty reliable too. Everyone always talks crap about CGC and how like they are bad graders. Well, stop sending stuff to them. Um, I still think though that their 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 grading standards are a little bit higher than you know what I've seen before. It's just not it's not consistent enough, right? But that's grading, man. I mean, like you just no risk it, no biscuit, no risk it, right? Or no risk it, don't risk it, no biscuit, whatever. But uh, yeah, Metroid's Seamus returns. I want to take a quick uh, quick look at price charting. Let's see here, and we're gonna look at Nintendo 3DS. Hold on. The Legacy Edition goes for quite a bit. Special edition, huh? Okay, here we go. So this is the one. Um, wow, I mean a graded that graded price that went for a VGA. Pretty pretty pricey. This one's a 99. Let's take a look at this one. Uh oh, it's ended, my bad. So this 99 CGC sold for only huh. Only sold for nine or 250 bucks. But the new price goes for 40. That's a pretty nice return on on that investment. Um, this one, so this VGA, this was back in October of last year. So the recent one I saw was actually a VGA 90 and it went for 800 bucks. I don't, I don't know. Uh, that's, that's kind of odd. Oops. I am not sharing. Hold on a second. That's really weird. Huh? Interesting. Okay. Well, there's something new every day. But uh, Metroid Seamus Returns, it's a N Nintendo 3DS game. I feel like there's a lot of potential in Nintendo 3DS. And, I mean, if you're buying a really... And I feel I feel like these these Nintendo DS games, like, they seal really nice. Um, I would recommend wiping them down with, like, a microfiber cloth and, and just, like, some Windex just to get your fingerprints off of it. Wrap it up in bubble tape or put it, like, in a bag and board comic book. Send it off to CGC or VGA. Perhaps VGA is the one to try out if you can find a really nice copy. But 30, 33 bucks, go VGA, sell for 800 bucks. Nice return. Uh, next, Game Boy Super Mario Land. Expect to pay almost a band for this sealed. A thousand bucks. I remember playing this game when I had a Game Boy way back in the day. It was like, it was basically Mario, right? For Game Boy. Um, 2K to 3K in VGA 80. VGA might be the way to go. Um, I don't know if you can find a sealed that can get a VGA 80 though. It's, that'd be really, you'd have to have a really clean copy to get that high of a grade. Um, let's take a look at price charting though. Game Boy. Okay. Okay, let's see here. So, wow, this one's 9.0 watt of seal. It sold for, and that was June, sold for 1500 on Heritage. An 8.5 watt of sold for 1726. That's sealed again. Wow, this 9.6 sold for 6K. Wow, uh, that's five times your investment if you buy a sealed version of that game. Pretty amazing. Um, yeah, I don't know if you could find a sealed version of this game, though, for, you know, a, a good price to try and invest in. But, yeah, that's I had no idea this game was going for that much, but it makes sense because it's one of the OG Game Boy uh, video games. So, there you go. And uh, last but not least, uh, I wanted to end this one again with Nintendo 3DS games. I think, again, there's some potential in the next three to five years once the Switch possibly becomes retired and all of you know, uh, there well, there may be a new system coming out. Um, it kind of coincides with the timing there, next five to six years, right? Summer 3DS goodness for you guys. Um, Yokai Watch. So the info I know about this game in particular is that 
there was three different versions of it prior to Nintendo 3DS. But instead of just doing one, two, three, they combined all three and put them out on the 3DS. Now, I know kids that still play 3DS, so it's still a played game, which is why I think there's some potential in the Nintendo 3DS. There's still younger generations playing 3DS versus a Switch, and there's definitely old heads <laughs> like myself that play Nintendo 3DS and they swear by it. It's a great system, definitely. Um, it's you okay. Watch this. You're gonna pay a pretty good penny for this for this uh, game. Um, it was it was a short print run, but I think very playable. Um, I think I don't think it's a bad investment long term. Five hundred bucks is quite a bit to give up for Nintendo 3DS game. Now I know that, but if it if this is like one of the considered one of the key games for the Nintendo Switch and or Nintendo 3DS, and the Switch becomes dormant or basically retired that might that that's kind of where my philosophy is coming out from here uh the next next game i have here is professor lane versus phoenix right i watched some stills of this game and it, this looks like a really fun game the the animation's really clean it's it it plays really well on the 3ds i think that's why the 3ds is so popular is because it's because it, it it just plays really well on both screens right easy to break though but this goes for a little bit less, 200 to 300 bucks sealed. There's a ton of different variations of the Professor Lane versus Phoenix Wright. There's a, just a Professor Lane standalone game. Um, it's from Capcom, so not so much banking on the fact that it'll go to, you know, live studio or live action, but the fact that the game has kind of a cult following, it's very playable. It's still relative. It's not, it's not like necessarily like a horror or like violent. Which is good gameplay that's always going to resonate really well with a video game in general. So that's the report I have for Tuesday, August 13th. Thanks everyone for coming out and checking out uh, the videos and all that good stuff. But um, thanks for watching. Go ahead and do me a favor, click that like button, subscribe to all your friends. You guys have a great day. Enjoy the weekend or enjoy the week. We're almost, well, we're almost midweek and take care. Thank you.